episode 31 and this week we have a big news roundup. Hey, hey, and welcome to the Learn Cardano podcast, the podcast where we break down all the ins and outs of Cardano so that you're completely and totally up to date and know exactly what's going on in the Cardano ecosystem so that you can make better decisions. All right, so this week we have a big news roundup. All these news stories that I haven't mentioned over the past few weeks, some highlights here and there, and I think it's going to take a little while to go through them all. So let's get straight into the news for this week. So for my first news item this week, it's not so much a news item, but more so an observation that I saw on Twitter from the creator of Crypto Nitties. Yeah, an NFT project that's built on Cardano. And this tweet talked about the congestion that was happening on the Cardano blockchain that you could see when some really large NFT drops were all happening at the same time. So the Yummy Universe drop was happening along with another one. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but this was a 10,000 NFT drop. So a lot of activity was happening at the same time. A lot of people were minting these NFTs and really congesting the network. So what Crypto Needies did was a test to see how long it would take just to send 10 ADA from one wallet to another. So the transaction overall took about 30 minutes during this peak time of operation on the network where users were heavily hitting the Cardano ecosystem and uh, hitting the blockchain to do these minting transactions. Now, this could be seen as a issue. I did speak about it. I did talk about it in last week's episode, episode 30, where we talked about the congestion issues in there and how people were potentially getting around that. So I encourage you to listen to that one and check out the show notes for this one to see this live transaction happen and the Twitter thread where it was spoken about. Now, the important thing to note here is that the transaction didn't fail. Unlike other blockchains where there is a gas mechanism and a, basically a bidding to ensure that your transaction goes through. Uh, For Ethereum, for example, you can pay more gas to ensure that the transaction happens. It's essentially a bidding war against other people in the network so that you can get your transaction on the block. Now, there was talk about trying to get this to happen, but it's not really needed. What happens with the Cardano blockchain is that these transactions are essentially delayed and just takes that little bit longer for that transaction to happen. And in this case, it well, it took about 30 minutes for the transaction to happen while the network was under heavy load. Now, there are other ways around it, like I mentioned in the previous episode, and I highly encourage you to listen to that. Now, this news story is quite big. It's quite important. And it's the exchange traded funds for Bitcoin, the ETF. So finally, in the United States, you can buy a exchange traded fund Bitcoin and have a little bit of exposure to Bitcoin if you haven't been able to do that in the past. So a company in the United States called ProShares now provides that particular service and they began trading their Bitcoin strategy fund on the 19th of October 2021, making it the first Bitcoin ETF to trade in the country. The fund trades under the ticker BITO. Now, this was bound to happen sooner or later. There are other countries that offer the ETFs and the United States would eventually catch up to a lot of these other countries. For cryptocurrency enthusiasts and investors looking to capitalize on their growing popularity of exchange traded funds, the possibility of an ETF that tracks Bitcoin is the best opportunity for this type of connection. However, There have been growing pains and problems in trying to launch the first Bitcoin ETF. The reason is that Bitcoin is the largest cryptocurrency in the world and by market capitalization remains largely unregulated. There we go. It's all about regulation. Additionally, the Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC, is hesitant to allow ETFs focused on the new and largely untested cryptocurrency market to make its way to the public. So how do these Bitcoin ETFs work? Well, 
Before we look at the potential benefits and risks of the Bitcoin ETF, let's have a look at what it actually is and how it works. An ETF is an investment vehicle that tracks the performance of a particular asset and group of assets. So it's not the asset itself. ETFs allow investors to diversify the investment without actually owning the asset. Now that, that's weird to me, really. So for individuals looking to focus only on the gains and losses, ETFs provide a simple alternative to buying and selling an individual asset. They usually focus on common grouped assets, such as uh, maybe sustainability assets, uh, for example. And the stock represents that all together in one big holding. So you can uh, potentially diversify all your holdings by investing shares of that particular ETF. So it's a, a really good vehicle and mechanism to do so. Now, this Bitcoin ETF mimics the price of the Bitcoin cryptocurrency and it allows them to go through the entire process of actually trying to own or go on the, not own, but go on the roller coaster ride that is Bitcoin without actually going through the complicated process of owning anything. So you don't need to set up your wallets. You don't need to go through KYC processes. You don't need to understand any of that. You can just talk to your share stockbroker and say, hey, I want some of this Bitcoin ETF and away they go. So a lot of the big money, the old money invest this particular way. They don't want to touch any of these complicated things. They don't want to buy a Trezor, a Ledger Nano hardware wallet, store their seed phrases on pieces of metal and then put them away in safes. They're not going down that path, but probably some of the early investors that do understand the technology have but not a lot of this big money that is sitting around trying to get into the ecosystem. So they wouldn't touch any of this stuff. And finally, they have a mechanism to do so. But why wouldn't you just, why, why would you just want to invest in something that mirrors the price of the cryptocurrency itself? For, for some people, it just doesn't make sense. But there is another crucial benefit on focusing on a Bitcoin ETF rather than on Bitcoin itself. And that's because the ETF is an investment vehicle. Investors would be able to short sell shares of the ETF if they believe the price of Bitcoin will go down in the future. This is not something that can be done in the traditional cryptocurrency market. So now these big investors can short us. Great, fantastic. Perhaps most importantly, though, ETFs are much better understood across the investment world than cryptocurrencies. Even as digital coins and tokens and whatever it may be become more and more popular, an investor that is looking to get involved in digital currencies could focus on trading a vehicle they already understand instead of having to learn all the ins and outs of something very complicated. So that's the probably the biggest news in the investment space at the moment, especially around Bitcoin. And we may see more and more of these ETFs come into play. Here in Australia, the Australian Securities and Investment Commission released a set of guidelines and requirements related to crypto exchange traded products or ETPs. After a series of consultations, the regulators has been undertaking since June of this year. The new guidelines will allow the funds to launch exchange-traded funds and invest directly in cryptocurrencies or crypto-adjacent assets, such as crypto miners and coin exchanges. So a number of the local funds have recently expressed interest in launching such an offering in Australia. So in Australia, we may see more and more of these investment vehicles appear and more of the crypto businesses here in Australia get more exposure to investment. So that's really cool. It's uh, overall good news, good, good information, and really exciting to see. I think we're just on the beginning of mass adoption, maybe. We'll see. And did you happen to see the price of Shiba Inu? Yeah, that went up a little bit. It's uh, interesting to see these meme coins jump up and down and go all over the place. But please be careful in what you're investing in, what you're playing around with. There are always potentials to be rug pulls and other really large bag holders to pull out all their investment 
and basically decimate the market. You can see that happen possibly with Doge and maybe even with Shiba Inu. There are some other tokens out there. I just saw on a tweet a little bit earlier that the Squid token uh, based off uh, Squid Game, they had a massive increase and rise in price as people are looking for the next coin to go that 100x, that 1000x. And this one went from a a, a massive price rise down 100% or it was 99% within a hour period. So please make sure you're doing your research and understanding exactly what you're getting into. If there are large bag holders of a particular token and they own a large supply, you can possibly be completely taken out and all your investments wiped if that happens. So please make sure you do your research on all this stuff. Consult an advisor as well and only invest what you are willing to lose. Don't invest your house. Please don't. And that just doesn't go for any of the meme coins. It goes for everything that we, we, we look into, all of these decentralized exchanges and DeFi solutions. Now, my next news item, to continue on with the NFT theme, we are now finally seeing more marketplaces launch with smart contracts. The next major marketplace that had launched with smart contracts is Tokhun, tokhun.io. They're the first ones to implement the smart contracts on a larger scale. So the entire marketplace has got smart contracts, which is really, really cool. We mentioned it earlier in other podcasts and spoke about the SpaceBuds website that has the smart contracts built into it as well. So they've got a marketplace on there where you can trade your space buds from peer to peer directly and interact with a smart contract on the blockchain directly. Now, Tokhan has taken that a step further and created their entire marketplace to interact with smart contracts. So this now compares with Ethereum-based marketplaces such as OpenSeas or Rarible. I have to say the interface as the actual marketplace doesn't look anywhere near as nice as some of these existing ones, but I think it's a matter of time. Now that the core fundamentals, the infrastructure and the code, the smart contracts are there in the background and the back end, it's just a matter of time of improving the user interface and making things look a lot nicer than they are at the moment, really present those NFTs and, and to have a, that really slick interface. So I think it's just a matter of time of that being improved. But the streamlined setup of the minting process and the selling of the smart contracts, uh, not selling the smart contracts, selling of the NFTs via the smart contracts is really cool. I'll do a video tutorial of this eventually unless someone else beats me to it. But if you look at the website, you can see some of the NFTs that are on there for sale have a little lightning bolt next to it. So this indicates that these particular uh, sales on the website are done directly via smart contracts. The other sales that are on there that are auction based, they aren't quite smart contract based yet. But if you're buying something directly from someone from peer to peer, those ones are all smart contract based and you can get in on those and uh, purchase your NFTs straight away. So congratulations to the Tokun team and the great work that they've done in regards to their platform. It's looking quite slick and catching up very, very quickly to some of the other existing blockchains out there that had this uh, quite a while ago. So uh, absolutely fantastic. Go check it out and give it a try. Try and sell one of your NFTs on there and let me know in the show notes in the comments how you go. My next news item here is a partnership. Got to love these partnerships. They keep on happening between these really big DEXs and other people in the ecosystem. And this one's between someone else in the blockchain space altogether, which is really, really cool. This is between Matrix Swap and Card Wallet. If you haven't heard my interview with Tiago around Card Wallet, please check that out. It's on YouTube and in next week's episode as well. So if you're not a YouTuber, if you're not listening on YouTube, if you're not watching on YouTube, you can listen to next next episode, episode 32, which is all around wallets for Cardano, all the different wallets and the specific interview with Card Wallet as well. So check out next the next episode in regards to that. But 
this uh, partnership with Matrix Swap is really interesting. So Card Wallet is a gateway for a lot of users on mobile devices to be able to buy cryptocurrencies using fiat currencies and pay directly via their mobile device so that they can buy certain crypto assets. So just as you would if you've used Coinbase before or even Binance now, you can buy cryptocurrencies quite easily on your mobile on your mobile device. So this is bringing the same kind of experience, Cardwell is, that is, bringing that same kind of experience, but in a non-custodial manner. So Cardwell allows you to actually have full control and access of your wallet. So it's not someone looking after your wallet online like Coinbase does. You have full ownership and access to your funds and your wallet. So if anything happens, it's your fault. So you've got to take that extra precaution. But Cardwell is providing that service. And now they're partnering up with Matrix Swap. Now, what Matrix Swap is, is a multi chain. So uh, it works on Polkadot, Ethereum, and Cardano. So they're aiming for three blockchains there. And they're providing a decentralized exchange across all three of those particular platforms. So this means I can trade my dot. Or ADA immediately or sell out everything that I've got to USD and be really, really flexible that way. So this cross-chain interoperability is one of the major goals in the Cardano ecosystem to try and get uh, working in between and interchangeability between all these different blockchains. And Matrix Swap is providing that service for Card Wallet to be able to do that. So Card Wallet can not only just hold Cardano-based uh, tokens or native tokens, it can hold Bitcoin and Ethereum as well. So having these multi-assets, multi-different chain assets on the same wallet and then being able to integrate that into Matrix Swap gives the user a whole field of, of flexibility in what they can do. So you're not just locked into one ecosystem and just trading on there. You're opened up to all these different DeFi applications, different amounts of liquidity on different pools, etc. So you have a lot more flexibility. So that kind of partnership is really, really cool. It brings a lot more flexibility to users on the Cardano ecosystem because they are Cardano centric, uh, Cardano centric applications, and they're spreading their arms and tentacles out to different blockchains. So it's really cool to see, really cool to hear, and that's a really important partnership to keep your eyes on. Now, in last week's episode, I did a roundup of all the decentralized exchanges and where they're at at the moment. Not all of them, but I did mention MinSwap. And in last week's episode, I talked about the t potential tax issues that have, have and may occur because of the MinSwap token raise. So they did an ICO and sold a whole bunch of tokens to the users to raise a bunch of funds. And as a result, it may have impacted any of the delegates that have participated in the FISO, the Fair Initial Stake Offering. And essentially what has happened is because the ICO has happened, there is now a set price for the min swap tokens. So it's now defined as being worth X. I don't know what the price is. So all of these are the delegates that are now, now on these pools that are delegating to get these MinSwap tokens. They now have a realized value of that particular token. So when you accept those tokens, you do the minting process and accept those tokens, you will be essentially making a profit at that point in time and will have to pay tax on your earnings as it comes through. So that is a, probably an unrealized tax advantage. Now, I am not a financial advisor. I'm not, not a tax accountant. Please seek your, your expert financial advisor's advice in regards to this. But it was a very interesting tweet that was brought up by Mike Roggio. And I've put this particular tweet into the show notes as well. So you can read through the quite long Twitter thread that talks about this. It's a 12 post Twitter thread by Mike that talks about the potential implications around this. And he also has a very long and detailed medium post that talks about this as well. 
And he liked to use it as a use case for any other projects out there that were thinking about doing something very similar or the order that they do things. Now, there is a way out, and he did mention a potential uh, way that MinSwap can relieve the tax burden on the delegates as well. Now, Mike isn't just a, a random Twitter person. He is quite uh, an expert in legal matters for cryptocurrency. So uh, check out his profile and learn a little bit more about what he does. And I highly encourage you to read this article as well. It's quite interesting and very in-depth. Now to go along with the theme of token raises, Adana. Adana is a project that I've been watching quite closely. They provide uh, a whole bunch of different DeFi applications, everything from a stable coin to loans and uh, liquidity from DEXs and stuff. They, they do a whole lot of different DeFi protocols and different DeFi functionalities for Cardano. And they have just successfully gone through fundraising rounds. So they've done a private sale, they've done a secondary private sale, and their final public sale is on the 4th of November, I believe, if my memory serves me correctly. But you can check out in the show notes exactly the details of that. It is happening on Occam, on the Occam Razor platform. So you will need to buy in with. ETH, unfortunately. So but not that there's anything wrong with ETH. It's just that you have to pay those gas fees. And I really just hate paying those gas fees for things. That little bit of extra I could have used buying more ADA or something else. And instead I have to fork it out on gas fees. It's just really, really annoying. But uh, Dunna have gone through and successfully raised that 10 million. And that will help fund so much more development in the next coming years. And when they finally do their final public sale as well, they will should raise a lot more and that should keep them nice and steady with a really good team of developers to build out their project. Now, there are quite a few big names in here. And when I see some of these names, it's really, really interesting to, to see. And it, it builds a lot of sense of trust. One of them is C Fund, and that's Cardano Foundation's uh, investment arm. So they've invested directly into Adana. So when you go through and invest in things like this, you go, you, you need to do your due diligence and vet the team, vet the product, look at code, etc., and make sure what that, whatever is being built, whatever you're investing in is definitely legit. And the fact that you see big names such as C Fund, Mechanism Capital, Morningstar, and then a few bunch, and then a few big names such as David Post from Chainlink, and Justin Sung, the founder of Tron, investing in this particular project. You know, it's uh, something pretty good. So, I'm I'm not telling you to invest in this project. I'm just telling you, keep your eyes peeled on this one. Uh, make sure you kept up to date with this one. But follow them on Twitter, follow them on Telegram, and find out exactly what's happening with the project so that you can potentially look more into it. There you go. Not telling you to buy anything. Now, my last news story for this week, yes, finally getting to the end of this, is a partnership directly with IOHK or IOG. They're partnering with Bondly and they're building a cross-chain Ethereum to Cardano NFT bridge allowing users to move their NFTs between networks. That's right. So you could, I guess, sell them on OpenSea, and, but then trade them on Cardano. So you're avoiding any of those big fees. So Bondly is providing that type of service. And it's really interesting to see that happen. They essentially have identified some of these issues that they can see in the Ethereum blockchain and trying to solve them with Cardano and bring assets over from one place to another. So if all these Ethereum assets that are being built over there, there's a huge amount of them. So if you can pick up just a small fraction and move them over to Cardano so that they can be stored and maybe moved and sold there instead of on the Ethereum blockchain, it could reduce a lot of the 
uh, high gas fees that you can see on Ethereum because you've moved those assets over to uh, Cardano. Now, because uh, assets, these NFTs, they're non-fungible, there's only one of them, they'll need to be burnt on one side and bought over onto the Cardano ecosystem and generated there. So there is a burning and creation mechanism, I assume, when you're moving from Ethereum to Cardano, and maybe even vice versa as as well, if you want to go back and sell it on OpenSeas or Rarible. So that's a really cool partnership. And really, really cool to see it happen as well. I, it, it's just really cool and bullish indicators for what's happening in both ecosystems, actually. So not just Cardano. Now, I'd just like to cap off this news segment with the news announcement of Project Catalyst Fund 6. So the results for that have finally come through. And a lot of the projects that I had interviewed, everything from Playmint to the Vietnamese community and even empowering the in manufacturing sector in Africa with Way Collective have all made it through this Fund 6 round of Project Catalyst, which is absolutely amazing. There was over 4 million in funding and Fund 6 is going to be even bigger and better as well. So uh, congratulations to all the projects that did get funded. Even our project got funded. So the automated phishing scam detection bot got funded. So I'll be working more closely with the professor to get this up and more visible to the public. So you can actually start reporting your scams, feeding the scam bot some more data and the machine learning and AI algorithms behind that will verify everything and hopefully provide a service for all these developers out there that are building things on Cardano so that they can use that data to potentially integrate it into their user interfaces. So yep, that's that's where we're at. It's fantastic to see all those projects get funded and I'm really happy that we got funded as well. My first initial fund for project proposal didn't get through, but you know, it's a learning process and I think I've learned well. That is everything for this week. That's the complete news roundup. You can find out more. You can see all the show notes. You can read everything at kadarnode.com.au slash EP031. Now, if you enjoy this podcast episode, I highly encourage you to leave us a five-star rating and review anywhere where you listen to your favorite podcast. But if you happen to be on the Apple Podcast Network, it really helps with the discoverability of the podcast and helps other people really get into the Cardano ecosystem. So I highly encourage you to do that. You can also use our sharing mechanism on our website at cardano.com.au slash share. And there you'll be able to share it out to various social networks and really push out the podcast that way as well. So there's multiple ways that you can help. If you can't leave that Apple rating, because not everyone's on the Apple ecosystem, I understand that. But give us a big shout out, give us that share, and we would absolutely appreciate anything that you can do for us. So until next time, everyone, please keep those seed phrases safe and secure, and make sure you keep everything backed up. All right, bye. Yeah, yeah, gotta do it like that. You've been listening to the Learn Cardano podcast. Gotta get it hype. Crypto is what we like. But this is not investment or financial advice. Gotta do your research, cause it's risky. We know it is. This show is educational and it's informative. Crypto's the future, really, it ain't no debating. IOHK, Emerco, we're not affiliated. Not Cardano Foundation. We just gotta say it. A show that you can learn and it's for your entertainment. Yeah, you gotta check it. Don't wanna be missing that. You were tuned in to the Learn Cardano podcast. Yeah, giving insight. Ain't another show like this when it come to crypto. Invest at your own risk. Might not be for everyone, but who it is for? We keep giving you some info and plenty more. Hey, yeah, the Learn Cardano podcast. Hey, yeah, the Learn Cardano podcast. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Keep it locked right here. Let's go.